Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a Bant EDH deck tech. We are doing deck techs every month because we've unlocked that level on Patreon. If you want to support the channel and see more content, Patreon is a great way to do that. Thank you to everybody who's over there. Now let's jump into the deck right here. This is really a battle cruiser deck. It plays giant spells that you're not going to see played in normal magic. It's got a lot of ramp. And that's why I chose Angus as the commander. Angus is a legend from the original legend set. He can fog with a tap ability of using blue, white, and green. If you can untap him during other people's untap phases, basically he can protect you from all combat-based damage. I really like him as a way to slow the game down and allow you to get into those giant endgame spells. Very, very nice commander. This is not the most competitive deck. This is much more of a casual deck. I've done some things here to bring down the overall price of the deck a little bit and play a little bit more casually paced cards. In a few months, I'll be doing my Sig deck, which is definitely on the more spiky competitive side, but this is even less competitive than the mono green that I did back in November, that deck is definitely much more on the competitive spiky side. Let's jump in here with the lands. As you'll see in this deck, I'm playing a lot of basic lands. I really don't want the attention that dual lands bring about. I also don't want to be stopped by color hosing cards that are aimed at taking out non-basic lands early on. So it's a very safe deck in that perspective. I've got my favorite artwork on most of these, and I've got a lot more green than anything else. The deck is not heavily green, but it is very heavy ramp, so it uses more forests early, and those forests let you go get the other lands that you need. I've got a few fetch lands here. I do feel that in casual EDH, you should only be playing fetch lands that allow you to get the particular basic land types that you have in the deck. Playing those off-color fetches just doesn't feel right to me. So in a casual deck, I stick to the ones that are on color. I'm also playing the shocks so that those fetches allow me to go get the shocks. And as I mentioned, I'm avoiding dual lands because this is a late game deck. I don't want early game hate. Now we do have a few utility lands in this deck. The first one is Dryad Arbor. This is a 1-1. One -one. Very nice as he can carry a piece of equipment if needed. Also can be a surprise tactic if you fetch the Dryad Arbor with a fetch land. Very, very useful land I'd include in most of my green EDH decks. Core Haven is a great card, very defensive card. It takes an attacking creature and prevents all combat damage that would be dealt by that attacking creature. It's a lot like a Maze of Ith, but it only costs about $5 or so, and it fits the theme of the deck really well going with Angus and preventing damage. Windbris Heights is another great card. If I'm attacking with three creatures, I get to cast whatever is underneath of it. I usually put one of my overpowered spells under Windbris Heights. So Celestial Colonnade and Treetop Village here kind of play the same role. It's nice to have a land that can act as a creature out on the board, especially after a board wipe. It is also Really good to have the Vigilance that's there on Celestial Colonnade. This could be a win condition in a worst case scenario. I'm playing a few of the Cycle Lands here. These are great in EDH. If the deck cost wasn't so high for casting costs, I would be playing more of them, but I often just want to put land in play. So I've just got a few of these to cantrip for extra cards later if I don't need them. Next, we're moving into white and white is really a support color in this deck. Sarah Ascendant does draw a lot of hate, but also gains you a lot of life. It's just the best one drop out there, and you're going to need the life to get into the late game, so I'm very happy to play her in this deck. Stoneforge Mystic is another great card in this deck. I'm playing two pieces of equipment, which are two of my three artifacts in the whole deck. Those pieces of equipment are Batter Skull and Sword of Feast and Famine. It's a ramp deck, so the ability to untap your land is really important. And Batter Skull just has really nice life gain and is great to put on some of the battle cruiser creatures that I'm going to cast later. I guess I should mention the other artifact in the deck at this point. It is Solemn Simulacrum. Really, really nice creature. Very good utility. It's an included in almost all of my EDH decks. Back to white cards. 
Wind Obedience is in here. For flavor reasons, I might pull this. The Extort ability, some people see as black-white, although the Reminder text doesn't actually make it illegal to play in a mono-white deck. And it really fits the theme of trying to slow people down and get to the late game. The life gain is really nice on this card. Wing Shards is pretty incredible in this deck. It's a great defensive card. People often cast several spells before attacking, and you can wipe out most of their attacking creatures with the Storm ability here. And it's Sacrifice, so it gets around some of those pesky regenerating creatures. A Steward Command is probably the best board wipe in EDH. At six casting cost, you can selectively destroy the things that are annoying you and keep your best things out. Very, very strong card. Terminus is in here, and I'll be doing a separate video on the new Tuck rules for Commander. I'm not a fan of them, but this is still one of the best board wipes in EDH. At one white casting cost, it's great off the top, but... This deck is a ramp deck and often just pays six to cast it. If I was relying on the top of the deck more, I would add Brainstorm and Top to this deck, neither of which I'm currently playing. Sudden Titan is where we get into the large creatures that often win this deck. His ability to bring back creatures from the graveyard like Sarah Ascendant is very, very powerful. And with something like Safi, who you'll see later, you have a nice combination to help keep him in play. Along the Pillow Fort theme, Gideon Jura is incredible. He makes individuals attack him instead of you. You can use him in combination with Angus's Fog to prevent that damage and then use the minus two to kill target tapped creature. This little card is a win condition in this deck. After a board wipe, I'm often able to bring back all of the creatures from my side that were destroyed and use their enter the battlefield effects. In a ramp deck, this is a great card. I would also play this in a green-white ramp deck. I've got Elspeth in here, another nice card. This is mostly in here just to distract people so that they attack Elspeth instead of me. If I can ever get her ultimate off, it's very nice. That's one of the important things about playing a mid to late game is you must have ways to stay alive during that early game. And Elspeth is very good at that, putting tokens out and threatening to ultimate. Next, we're going to talk about the largest single color in this deck. It is green, although it is not really a green deck. Green is here to ramp. Green Sun Zenith, Recross the Pass, Cultivate, Sky Shroud Claim, Farseek, Boundless Realms, Seaborn Muse, Oracle of Mondiva, Corsair of Crufix, Sakura Tribal Elder, and Noble Hierarch all do a great job ramping. These are wonderful cards. Start with the actual ramp spells. Farseek's great in a multicolored deck. Sky Shroud Claim is here because the lands come into play untapped. This is better than explosive vegetation. And when you've got the shocks or dual lands, you can even go get multi-land forest because it does not state basic forest. Cultivate is another very nice card, especially with Oracle, because you can place both those lands. Recross has a nice deck manipulation element to it. This is one of my favorite green ramp cards because the land comes into play untapped, and the Clash ability often lets you select better cards later. Green Sun Zenith isn't just ramp, although because of the Dryad Arbor that is in this deck, it is a first turn ramp spell, and late game it can get you some incredible creatures. Noble Hierarch just fits the theme and is a very, very good mana dork. Tribal Elder combos very well with Sun Titan. Corsair is often extra cards off the top of your deck. Oracle of Moldiva is great, especially if you're able to draw a bunch of cards, which when we get to blue, you'll see some heavy draw spells. And this is the ramp card to beat all other ramp cards. Once you've got the mana for it, you basically double your mana in play. Really, really powerful. It goes over the top. Outside of ramp spells, there are some utility spells in green. Scavenging Ooze, just great. You need some main deck graveyard control, and I've got a few ways to fetch it if need be. Sylvan Library is better card drawing than most blue spells and great card selection. Survival of the Fittest is another wonderful card 
that allows you to go through and find whatever creatures you need. Grossing Grip is one of the few non-creature effects in here that you can get out of a creature. Sometimes, though, you just need that in order to stop a Torpor Orb or other pesky permanent in a control deck. Eternal Witness allows you to bring anything back. This is the best regrowth in EDH. Court of the Calling is a wonderful card at instant speed. It is much more flexible than Green Sun Zenith. Acidic Slime is extremely useful in this deck. I will be replacing this with an English version because this is one of the few decks that I actually loan out to friends. I will probably also be trading out the Cryptic Command specifically for one with text so that if I loan it out, people know what the different versions are. And Praetor's Council here is one of the best draw spells in the game. I've cast this for 20 plus cards from my graveyard before. It also has a built-in reliquary tower effect to it. And I put Seaborn Muse here last because I really want to highlight how powerful this combination is. Being able to untap Angus every turn, just incredible in this deck. It's like having a reusable fog every single turn. Let's look at the blue cards here. I've got Ponder, but not Brainstorm. I'm not running a lot of fetch lands, and Ponder lets you look at more cards. Propaganda is here for the Pillow Fort theme to keep you alive. Intuition is here because I really like the fact that it makes your opponent make difficult choices in what card to give you. Factor Fiction is here for the exact same reason. Very, very good draw spell and a lot of fun in EDH. This is probably the most annoying of the wins that's here. Once I've ramped out to an incredibly large amount of mana, I can return all the permanents from somebody else one by one. Lenalendra, Archmage, is a very nice creature for slowing the game down and making your opponents think twice before casting over the top non-creature spells. I've got Jace the Mind Sculptor in here because why not? He's Brainstorm. He's an incredible win condition, and he really has to be dealt with. He does paint a giant target on your head, but it usually takes a turn or two for people to go after him. Now we get into some of the overpriced crazy spells. Rite of Replication, when kicked, is going to give you five copies of other people's creatures or your own creatures. I like winning with five copies of somebody else's creatures. Very, very nice spell. Got a foil one here. Very nice foil. Next, we've got Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command has four modes. Tap down all of your opponent's creatures or target player's creatures, I believe. Let me double check that. I'll put up the actual printed text of this on the screen. Uh, draw a card, counter a spell, bounce a permanent. Often two of these are really, really useful. Great card in EDH. Bull Drifter is one I have in here mostly for nostalgia. I've played this card a lot originally when it was in standard. It's a way to draw two cards. If you've got a way to bounce it, you can continually draw cards. Just a fun card to have. Teferi is in here to stop people from uh, messing with my plans on my turn. He's a little bit of a cop. I like him a lot because of Flash. Now we get into some of the crazy over-the-top blue cards. Spelljack is a six casting cost. Counter your spell, and then I get to cast it later. What an incredible card. I really, really like this card because it lets me win with my opponent's spells. Sphinx is factor fiction with a 5-6 body. This is my favorite thing to write of Replicate because it's going to refill your entire hand and give you a flying armada. Time Stop is the type of counter spell that people have to read twice. It ends their turn. If you want to be really mean, you can even cast it during someone's upkeep before they've drawn a card. I usually like waiting until they've set up a combination, spent a lot of time preparing it, casting several spells, and then end the turn. This is another incredible card. Gather Specimens allows you to get all of the creatures that come into play on somebody else's turn. I have stolen 40 plus ponies from a Bant deck about a week ago. Just really, really nice. When playing a multicolored deck, so I really like to focus on some of the multicolor cards. So I've got a lot of gold cards in here. Safi combos really well with Sun Titan. As you can sack Safi to protect Sun Titan and then bring Safi back. 
Coiling Oracles is another great one to bring back again and again with Sun Titan, giving you more ramp or extra cards. Quasili's Pride Mage is another great card overall with Sun Titan. Just use that effect again and again. I've also got Aura Shards in here, another nice way to police the table. Every time one of your creatures comes into play, destroy an enchantment or an artifact. To draw lots of cards, I like to rely on Edric. Attack with a few creatures, draw a bunch of cards. It is double-edged as it lets everybody else at the table also draw a bunch of cards. Knight of the Reliquary is very good, even though we're running a limited number of utility lands. I often need one of those utility lands specifically. You can also get very, very large in this deck. Seal of the Godhead is a great way to get through one of your creatures, gain some extra life, and give it plus something, plus something. Shardless Agent is just a lottery card. You cascade into something in your lower casting costs, and it's always good. Bant Charm is another really nice one, as it's a counterspell and a way to put annoying creatures on the bottom of somebody's library. It also destroys artifacts. If you're playing the Bant Colors, Supreme Verdict is a great board wipe, because it can't be countered. Plasma Capture is one of the most underplayed cards in EDH. This is incredible. You counter their spell, and you gain a bunch of mana to do something obscene the next turn. Mystic Snake is a very nice counter spell in here. Prophet of Kruvix is another Seaborn Muse type effect. Very, very powerful in this deck. Prime Speaker is another way to gain massive cards. Another nice Rite of Replication target. Drug Skull Reaver has life and drawing cards. This is what the Steel of the Godhead often goes on to help win the game. Wargate is another Bant All-Star, all three colors there, and lets you go through your deck and put any permanent into play with the converted cost, co cost X or less. Sphinx's Revelation, a great way to draw lots of cards and gain lots of life. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, doing another deck tech, this time on Angus McKenzie's Bant deck. Got a lot of videos coming up here in the near future. We have a top 10 best dragons as commanders coming out next week. And we've got an altered art special from one of the fans of the channel. Thanks.